Hi, I'm Mike Ladis with Crack Music. Today I want to talk to you about phrasing. Phrasing is how you connect your notes when you play and what you do in between notes. A lot of times this is not talked about. Uh, early piano method is usually focused on reading and students who are taught to read, usually that is about all they do is they read. Reading is certainly important. It's important um, for uh, English speakers and it's important for musical speakers, all right? But uh, so is diction, so is pronunciation, so is inflection and delivery. Just like you don't necessarily like a monotone speaker, uh, you also don't like a monotone performer. So I wanna analyze today three elements of phrasing and how you can begin to apply them uh, even to beginner piano music that you're playing. First element is articulation. Articulation is the attack of the note, whether that note is slurred or whether uh, it is played detached like a staccato, all right? So uh, listen here, I can play. All right, or I could play. Okay, so you th heard there that aside from the notes that are repeated, the notes that are not repeated are now connected, all right? And then even when I apply the pedal, the notes that are repeated now are even more connected. The second element of phrasing is dynamics. I think it's helpful to think of dynamics uh, as a scale from white to black, where white would be no sound at all, and black would be absolute full volume. And typically when you see a dynamic, uh, like say mezzo piano, then you might interpret that as kind of like, like a heather gray, like this light gray, right? Uh, well, you know, the piece like I just played, that mezzo piano might be all you get, right? for that entire first uh, section of the tune. Now that does not mean that every note should have the precise same volume, all right? That would uh, be monotone. So you wanna think of each dynamic that you see in your score as a range rather than a fixed volume. All right, so uh, mezzo piano would go from kind of this, you know, you know, faint gray, almost white, to uh, you know, approaching this this medium gray, right? And then I can play mezzo piano within that range. Okay. Lastly, a third element would be tempo. Tempo uh, contributes to phrasing. And there's nothing that destroys phrasing like hesitation or stops. So uh, it's really important that you don't try a piece that's really beyond your ability or your difficulty because you won't be able to phrase it at all uh, because you, you won't be able to maintain tempo. So choose something that's simple and execute it well versus taking something that is much too hard and executing it poorly. Uh, but when it comes to tempo and phrasing, uh, you can do certain things in certain styles like a cello rondo, which is to kind of speed up, uh, or uh, retard, which is to gradually slow down, or even rubato, which is kind of this give and take, literally means borrowed time. All right, let's see if I can do a little bit of phrasing with the tempo in this now. So a little bit of pushing and pulling there. And I, I maybe did more than I normally would on this piece, but I'm trying to illustrate how this is a contributing factor to overall phrasing. So keep these three things in mind and try to apply those to whatever repertoire you're doing. And you wanna start now, uh, even while you're learning the piece. Don't wait till you've been playing the piece you know, for two months and finally got it, and now all of a sudden you wanna try to phrase. Phrasing is a fundamental component of all music and all styles, and you should um, begin to phrase as you learn a piece. I'm Michael Adisa with Crack Music, and uh, if you like this video, please uh, give a like down below, and uh, leave us your comments if any questions or any other topics you'd like to see us address. Check us out at the Crack. Thank you.